server actions. Some of you love them, some of you hate them, some of you are indifferent. I'm a big fan, but I've made the mistake and used them um, in the wrong way. And I see a lot of people do so. And that's why I wanted to record this video today. I noticed that a lot of people use server actions as their default data fetching pattern. And I have in the past as well, just because solely because the DX is so clean and it's so easy to reuse. But here's the issue. If you're using Next.js, which you most likely are, because I don't know of server actions in any other framework, which is why it's the best framework. Uh, if you're using Next.js, you're probably going to be using server components. And I've made this mistake before, and I've seen others do it as well, where they use a server action in a server component. But that doesn't make sense. And before we get into the diagram, let me tell you why that doesn't make sense. Think of this picture, VAR, this picture in your mind real quick. Imagine you're in the house, your mother's in the house as well, and you want to speak with her. And instead of going up to her and talking to her, you send an email, right? It makes no sense. She's right there. Same thing when it comes to server components. Calling a server action is an extra redundant step that you don't need to do. You're already on the server in a server component. So you can fetch data directly in the server component, right? So look at this diagram for a second. So you're on the Next.js server, you render a server component, and instead of the fetching the data here, you call the server action, then that server action fetches the data, let's say it pulls from your data database, and then that data is returned to the server action, then that data is returned to the server component, then the user can see that data, right? So there's an extra redundant step that you don't need to take, and this will not scale, right? And server components were designed for you to fetch on them, right? So even if you're doing an API route in a server component, that's the wrong way to do it. You have an extra redundant request that you don't need to. And truth to the matter, this is not a brilliant way of doing things. But speaking of brilliant, that reminds me of today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. And learning how LLM works has been my favorite course that Brilliant has to offer. Get hands-on with real language models as you explore how they build vocabulary, choose their next word, and more. Understand the importance of training data by comparing models trained on Taylor Swift lyrics to models trained on a cookbook. It really doesn't get any more fun than that. Learn how to tune an LLM to generate different kinds of output, whether it be poetry or a cover letter. Now to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Ross Mike. That's brilliant.org slash Ross Mike, R-A-S-M-I-C, or click on the link in the description below. You'll also get 20% off your annual premium subscription. Now, thank you so much, Brilliant, for sponsoring this video. Now, that being said, there is a correct way of using server actions. And in my opinion, the best time, the best way to use server actions is in forms, event handling, and in combination with Tanstack query. Now, when it comes to forms, I don't use the uh, the way they recommend uh, server actions uh, on Next.js docs where you have like form and then action, et cetera, et cetera. I still use React hook form because React hook form has a lot of tools built in that make um, just building a form, the experience for both the user and myself, very, very simple. But I still use uh, server actions for forms, event handling as well, especially if it has some sort of mutation. I use server actions then, and that's where I love server actions. And in combination with tense that query. Now, let me show you some code on how that looks like. So for example, I have this server action that deletes a message and it's a simple um, action where I just, you know, update some stuff on Superbase, pretty simple. Now, the way I call this server action is I call it in a button on click. So you can see this button on click right here. When this button is clicked, this server action fires. So this is a delete button. And when this server action is fired, whatever process needs to happen happens. In this case, the super base uh, table is updated. This is my favorite way to use server actions. Another way is in forms. Again, I use react hook form, still my favorite way of use uh, of creating forms. And in react hook form, you get an on submit function. And this is where you can, you know, do whatever you want with the data. And I call a server action in the on submit. So in this on submit, this is a form to create a document. In this on submit, I have a create document a server function. And if we go to it there, again, it's a simple call to my super base database. I just insert some data there. And this is my favorite way of using server actions. Now, the last way, and again, you don't you don't have to do this, but I like doing this myself, is with hooks. So 
let's look at this hook right here. So I have a hook called use get document by ID where I pass the ID and in the in the use query, instead of writing a fetcher function, my fetcher function is a server action. So if I go to this uh, to this uh, function right here, get document ID dot TS, it's a simple server action and I can place that server action where I would place the fetcher function in uh, this use query. And this is my favorite way of using server actions. And like I mentioned before, the best way to fetch data is in a server component. Now look at how many ste steps it took when I used a server action in a server component or an API route in a server component versus just fetching data directly on the server, right? Server call fetches the data, data is returned, that data is then rendered to the browser. Super simple, super easy. And the way I use this in my code, again, I'm using my Tzahafi project as uh, as a demo. The link is in the description to the repo below. And this is a perfect example. So I have this server uh, rendered page called AI. Um, I pull the user ID and then I call read messages. Now read messages, if you look, does not have the use server up top. This is not a server action, but I call this in my server component. So read message, this fetch, um, and essentially it's not a fetch, it just calls Superbase and gets the data from the DB, stores it in response, and then I pass this, like I, mute, I play with the data a little bit, and I pass this to a component called chat, and chat is a client component. Now what's interesting is the moment you click on this page, chat is already populated with the data. There is no flash or no need to have like loading state because I fetched the data in a server component. Now, if read messages was a server action and I can do that, I have an extra redundant step to fetch this data, which does not make sense, which is not brilliant, right? So. I just wanted to make this video because I've made this mistake before and I think, you know, there might be other people like me who've made this mistake. Fetch your data on the server component. Server actions are best used for forms, event handling, and I like to use them in combination with TanStack query just because I get my types and the DX is very, very nice and clean. But that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if I missed anything. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.